Hey, yo, this your boy, JQ Vault, coming to you live and direct from the Purple Underground in conjunction with your boy, in conjunction with your boy, P. Ross, doing a critique on an album. That's right. Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. Sometimes some albums are so great that they involve or evoke movements of themselves. You know, excuse me. When uh, Nirvana went on and did Nevermind, that whole started a whole grunge movement back in the early 90s. Well, the Summer of Love, a lot of people can contribute that to Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. That whole psychedelic era, you know, with the Haight-Ashbury group out of San Francisco. First of all, the album was like, it was an anticipation for it because the people knew the Beatles had this album coming out. And when, you know, when you got anticipation for something, it's like in the same way of an orgasm. You know, you're waiting, you're waiting, you're waiting. And then finally, boom, thing dropped and it's like, bam, it's out there. And the thing was that it was so strong that it was something that the Beatles, they was already, you know, experimenting with some stuff. But they hit something with a verb and a vein that a lot of people had not quite yet was ready for, you know. And uh, that's what makes the album great. Now, a lot of people, of course, they center on, on that uh, opening piece, uh, Sergeant Pepper's Lone Star Club Band, followed by, uh, you know, a little help from my friends. So it was a great, you know, great piece. You know, nothing put that down. But I'm going to go ahead and give you what I feel is some of the most underappreciated work on that album. Okay, I'm going with uh, Fixing a Hole. Some people say that's basic. Some people might even call it bubblegum pop. You know, but I ain't going there, you know. I'm saying that basically... The melody and the lyrics of the song blended together makes the whole song pretty much something that's more than just, you know, just lines on a piece of paper. You know, it's something about dealing with basically life that sometimes when you got problems that go through, that you're going through, all you can do is try to deal with the problem at hand. Now, the phrase we like to use is, it is what it is, you know. But that's basically what fixing a hole is about. It is what it is. There's a hole where the rain is getting in, I gotta fix it. But the way they sing it and the way they put it down, you can go ahead and feel it that it's like, okay, this is what I'm doing. And basically that's all life is, is like, as far as problems are concerned, you just deal with one problem at a time and you deal with it. Then you got your song, uh, Will You Still Live Me? Will You Still Love Me? Will You Still Feed Me? Will You Still Need Me when I'm 64? All right. Back in the time of the 60s when the sexual revolution was going on, it was easy for a man or a woman to find somebody that they were sexually compatible with, right? They said, okay, you know, we're going to do this thing because we're sexually compatible. I like what you do. You like what I do. We go on. We go with that. But what Paul McCartney was trying to say was, okay, now this is all good. Now we're enjoying all this great sex and the freeness of it because we're in our 20s. But will you still need me? Will you still feed me when I'm 64? When I'm no longer the sex machine that I was when I was in my 20s? When I'm no longer the man that, you know, had all the sexual prowess when I was in my 30s, now I'm in my 60s. You know, are you going to feel like, all right, I didn't pass my prime, I'm no more use, you're going to kick me out? But, you know, people that say looking for a soulmate, they're looking for somebody they can grow old with, you know, and they can go ahead and go down the path of life together. And Paul was tapping in on that, you know, and that's why there was an ear there for what he was trying to say. And that's genius in that, you know, and I'm feeling that. Then you got the song Getting Better. Now, this was kind of bold, I thought, because basically the Beatles could have went on with the mindset of, you know, we already accepted, we already the greatest rock band in the world, we're going to play it safe. But no, Paul went on and talked about a song that's getting better. And in the song, he's saying that I used to beat my woman. Yeah, he's talking about domestic violence. I used to beat my woman, I used to be cruel to her and kept her from the things that she loved. You know, but being human, he said, but it's getting better. I've kind of changed my ways, is basically what he's saying in the song. And now things are getting better because now I, I looked in the mirror, basically looked at myself, and I knew the changes I had to make. And a lot of people ain't got the kind of guts when you're already a world renowned superstar to sing a song like that. But see, that was the Beatles still relating to the common man when he made that song. And then you got uh, what I think is one of the most underappreciated songs of all time She's Leaving Home. Now, any man that is a father, or a stepfather to a little girl. You know that it's something inside of you that is that you made a decision, a switch goes off when you see that little girl for the first time, if it's like when she just came out the womb of her mother or whenever she got introduced to you as a stepfather and you say, I'm gonna protect this female for the rest of her life because I'm her dad. 
or I'm her stepdad. I'm that strength that she relies on. Okay, but this song talks about how a woman, basically who was a little girl at one time, but now she has become a woman. And now, being the function of a woman, she's ready to give her love to the man she's going to consider to be the man of her life. And in this song, she does it without any consent or confirmation from her parents. So she basically elopes. And these parents get the song, or get the news from a letter, rather, that's written. You mean, she didn't have the decency to even look them in the face and tell them. She just, like, left them, let them know what she was going to do. So this thing hits them like a lightning bolt. That their little girl, basically, not only is she a little girl, she's a grown woman. And now she's basically saying she don't need that paternal nurturing that mother and father gave her. And she's off to the races with some other dude. And with the violins coming down in that song, and Paul saying she's leaving home. If you are a real man, and you have been the father of a child or a stepfather, and you listen to the song, I dare you listen to the song without any distractions. And think about your daughter when she was a little girl and listen to that song and challenge yourself and see if you're not moved to tears, if not on the outside, at least on the inside. Like I said, one of the greatest underappreciated songs of all time. Then, of course, you know the classics that's on that song, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. Yeah, people talk about Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds and LSD because of Lucy, Sky and Diamonds. Okay, you can go that route. But basically, I think John was trying to say, hey, look, if you're on an acid trip, whatever imagery comes to you, you go with it. If it means uh, newspaper taxis appear on the shore, you know, and climb in the back with your head in the clouds and you're gone. Look for the girl with the, uh, the sun in her eyes and she's gone. You know, stuff like that. Just go with the acid trip. Don't try to break it down. I think he was trying to express the freeness of an acid trip and the freeness of the spirit that goes with that. Just like with the song Within You, Without You. John is probably he basically telling us, not probably, he's basically telling us, it's like, you know, if you're going to really understand your function in this world, you kind of got to step outside your body. You got to step outside of you so that you can see, you know, especially when you're in love with somebody else within you, without you, you know, I got to see how I am inside of who I am. And then I got to see what kind of function or purpose I serve with the person that loves me. See, that's deep. That's genius songwriting right there. And John Lennon gets a lot of credit for that. Then, of course, you know, what some people may call a masterpiece, and I ain't got a problem with it. You know, some of the lyrics I ain't agreeing with, but then again, just because I don't agree with all the lyrics of a song don't mean the song ain't great. You know, about a day in the life. You know, when he's talking about, uh, I read the news today, oh boy, you know, about a man that, a uh, lucky man that made the grade, and he blew his mind out in a car. Okay, all this is saying in the song, but then... Here come the part where Paul is singing, woke up, got out of bed, dragged a comb across my head. You know, that's the routine stuff that happens in a day. But at the same time, this traumatic stuff happened also in the same day. So to throw this all in together in one song, that I would say is a masterpiece in itself to do that. And uh, you take all these songs together, you form them and get, come out with what they came out with in 67, and you do have a true masterpiece. So I do give an endorsement for that album as well. All right, it's your boy Jake Uvalt, and I'm out.